Okay. When I was 10, I had my first beehive. I produced 160 pounds of blackberry honey off of one beehive, which in Oregon, 80 pounds on a hive would be a good year. And I went around and sold um, Allen's honey to you know my dentist and you know whoever else would buy a, a jar of honey. My dad would do Saturday beekeeping classes, and I would go in and you know be his assistant, help. Um, explain to them, what, you know, what the different types of bees are, the queen and the, and the worker bee and the drone. You know, people who had been at Glory Bee a long time, you know, they'd, they'd brazz me and tease me and, and say, hey, you're going to run this place someday? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then. Glory Bee is 204 people. Most of those people are here in Eugene, Oregon. We are national and our retail brand is growing nationally. We handle over 50 million pounds of product every year, 50% of which is organic. First time beekeepers here, raise your hands. Okay. Welcome to beekeeping, a great adventure in your life. We're gonna start out by talking about the hive location. Our origins are in beekeeping and honey, and that's still a significant part of the business and definitely the heartbeat of the business. We take a lot of pride in the purity and quality of the honey that we buy and sell. Today, we carry over 40 different product lines. Things like natural sweeteners, organic, expeller press, non gmo oils. We also uh, deal a lot in seeds, herbs and spices. And then 50% of the business is selling ingredients to food manufacturers. We are wholesalers. And then we have our own branded products that make their way out into the grocery store shelves. The truth of the matter is, we didn't really know what we were getting into at first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the business basically started with the idea that I was a beekeeper and we were selling beekeeping supplies out of our garage. And out of necessity, we recycled much of what we had to work with. You know, he would recycle drums and um, he would wash out totes. Uh, maybe it wasn't the environment in mind. It was it was out of, hey, I can save, save some money here. We've always recycled drums and buckets and we've always been you know, bought used things if we could, or equipment, you know, got repaired. We, we just haven't been wasteful. I believe sustainability without us knowing it at first was a core value that we had, but didn't know that. My son, Alan, has really given the major leader, leadership of, of doing that. And uh, I think it's, it's brought value to the company and it's brought more integrity to the company. Mm -hmm. At the core of kind of my inspiration is this idea of, of stewardship. The world, you know, um, has come up with the name sustainability, and yet I kind of go back to stewardship. We're super proud of the progress we've made. A couple years ago, we had only 6% waste in the business. Um, out of all the tons of waste that, that go through the business, only 6% went to the landfill. I monitor our waste practices, so what gets thrown out into the trash and what gets recycled and what gets composted. 
We're just starting to go into CNG trucks, which are compressed natural gas, and that burn fuel more efficiently than our current biodiesel trucks. For three years in a row now, we've reduced our water use by 10% every year, and that's that's just awesome and amazing, it, particularly because we've been increasing our production by 10% a year. The environment affects healthy food, and bees are really at the roots of the food supply. A third of every bite that we eat is pollinated by bees. It's nuts fruits and vegetables, pretty critical to the, our health and this amazing earth. Everybody maybe this summer say they're gonna plant one flower for a bee. Can you, can you raise your hand if you're gonna to commit to that? Give yourselves a round of applause. Bees are incredible, incredible creatures and I cannot help but look at a bee and realize that there's gotta be a God, I mean, did you know a queen bee lays 2,000 eggs a day? And have you ever heard the expression, the bee's knees? Each of the bee's legs has two knees. Pretty cool, five eyes, two stomachs. One bee creates a 12th of a teaspoon of honey in its lifetime. It flies 15 miles per hour. A bee flaps its wings 11,000 times per minute. And that's why, bzzz, that's why you hear that, because it's flapping so fast. And you might not know this, but the bees are in danger. This year, they're reporting 50% losses of bee colonies. So there's half as many bee colonies in the United States as there was in uh, World War II. So with growth in population and uh, agricultural demand, to have half as many beehives, uh, you know, is a problem. In 2012, I just was convicted that you know, being a part of the honey industry and being part of the beekeeping industry wasn't enough. We were standing on the sidelines kind of saying it's a problem and yet not really doing anything ourselves to, to make a difference. And so I just presented this idea to, to the team that we, we start this Save the Bee initiative. And so, um, so we did. We have two main goals, it's to raise awareness and raise money towards the research. And we started out by giving 1% of all our retail honey and beekeeping sales to this Save the Bee uh, Foundation. Since we started in 2012, we've been able to raise $198,000. You know, it's been a difficult business over 42 years, and yet we've been blessed and we've been successful and we're still here. <laughs> One of the things I've realized while working here is we all have a sphere of influence, and that sphere of influence is it's bigger than we know. We want to inspire the world to live healthy. We envision a world where people are nourished by food that is not only good for them, but good for the planet. One of the things that's really important to Glory Be and me and our future of being a Christian business in the world and, and being stewards is when there's an opportunity of something in need, how do we step out in faith? We have always had the philosophy that we give out of what God's given us first. And that's a legacy that will carry on because what God's given us, we have the privilege to give back.